Hello, and welcome to this ALTTP NMG No Save and Quit Speedrun Tutorial, Episode 8. In this video, we will be tackling Thieves Town. There are a few route divergences in this segment, which will cause the video to run a little longer than most other segments. You can grab lots of safeties here, there are more efficient times to get them, but I'll go over that in later episodes. There is absolutely no new tech to cover in this episode. Before we get started though, I want to remind you to like and subscribe if you've been enjoying the series so far. It really helps me out. So let's get this thing started. First we need to do a little item collection on our way over to Thieves Town. In the optimal route we will only grab and activate the flute. I will go over some of the other items you can grab now if you skip them in the Desert Palace split. First let's head out of the Palace of Darkness area. Dash down and left. Walk up and dash through the Ropa here. And walk down to the left and dash once you are above the hedge. Walk into the entrance of the hedge maze and move down and left a little to dash to the other side. Walk up and dash through the ropa here. Dash to the right through the second ropa, dash down, and then line up with the right side of this hedge to avoid bonking into the tree on our dash down. Dash left to the entrance of the pot area and walk down. Move down so that you brush up against the top of the statues. Stop as far right as you can, and then perform a hammer dash by pressing Y and A on the same frame to knock down the pegs as you dash through them. Stop your dash above the left rock and dash to the left. On this screen you will want to start your dash with Link in line with the bottom of the upper ledge. This will make sure you can dash straight through on the next screen. Stop your dash when you are in the bushes and do a dash turn facing down. Dash down, below the trees, and dash left. Dash left until you clear the first tree, then move down and dash through the bushes so you can do a dash turn facing up. Move a little to the left and dash up to the fox known as Stumpy. Talking to him will give you the shovel. Switch to your mirror and activate your mirror between the two tiles of flowers here. Switch to your shovel, face right, and dig for the flute. You will need to sit through this cutscene. Once it's over, line up against the tree, dash down, stopping your dash before you bonk into the tree, and walk out of the haunted grove. Dash down through the bushes, dash turn left, and dash up. Charge your sword as you walk to the next screen. Perform a spin speed here by pressing A one frame after releasing B, and touch the stairs to your left. You want to hug the rocky ledges here to avoid taking damage from the guards. Make sure you exit the screen as far left as possible. Dash to the left and dash up when you get to the path. You want to start your dash lined up with the left wall to get to the weather vane Stand to the left of the statue to activate your flute, as this will give you a few extra frames of movement after the cutscene's done. Stand for the Ducks National Anthem, and watch him fly around all happy-like. This is where we can have some divergence. At top level play, you will just go to Dark World from here. At an intermediate level, you can grab safeties that you skipped earlier in the run, namely at least one bottle and maybe the bug net. If you are new, there are a couple things you can do here, to make this run a lot safer. However, this will add minutes to the run. Let's do the beginner safeties first. You will have already grabbed a bottle and the bug net during the desert split. I will go over those items here as well in case you don't want to go back to episode 3. As a beginner, you will have grabbed the mushroom already on your way through to get to the master sword. Intermediate runners will also grab the mushroom to keep till the end of the run where it's most useful. Use your newly activated flute and go to Flute Spot 2. Menu to your mushroom, charge your sword, and press Y when you are facing the witch. This will give her the mushroom. Perform a spin speed and use the stairs. Go past the hut to the left and go off the screen. Come back, and go into the witch's hut to get the magic powder. The witch has now turned your drugs into something super useful. Let's flute back to the village, flute spot 3. You can either go to Dark World now, or you can increase your magic capacity. 
It's faster to do this in the next split, but if you are having difficulties during this split, it's easy enough just to get it now. Dash south and dash right, menu to your hammer, and go up the stairs. Hammer the peg and drop down the ledge into the hole. Menu to your magic powder and sprinkle some on the bowl of red, um, jello. This will wake up a super powerful being and he will want to fight you to the death or something. Or he's just too sleepy for that and he's just super pissed you woke him up for no good reason. He burdens you with additional magic as a punishment for waking him up. Leave the cave and menu to your flute to go back to flute spot 3. Now for the intermediate route. As you come up from the south end of town, instead of going straight to the weather vane, you will dash up to the back of the tavern for your flute. Then you go straight north to the sick kid for a net. It's up to you if you want the net, but since you're here you may as well grab it. Dash up to the weather vane and activate your flute. This is where all the routes will come back together. Dash left through the opening and dash up when you are in the middle of the pink path. Dash left below the path and dash up once again. Dash up the right side hitting the bush. Walk to the left and dash up through the blue guard. Stop your dash at the top of the screen to avoid bonking on the tree and go to the next screen. Dash to the right, menu to your hammer and dash down. It's a good idea to menu buffer here so that you are in the correct position for your dash down. Dash down to the tree, move right, and perform a hammer dash down. Pick up the rock, and we'll be back in the dark world. Dash up to the row of bushes, and dash left, and then dash down. Dash down below the path as before, dash right, and then dash down the center of the path, and dash once above the row of benches, or whatever those things are. This is Thieves Town. You'll want to grab the left side of the statue here so you don't roll back very far, and we can dash inside. Once inside, go right and line up against the left rail and dash up. Walk to the right and perform a quick hop to the lower floor and dash up. Dash up and dash right. Dash right and dash down against the right wall of the first opening. Dash down and go up the stairs. Perform a quick hop off the ledge and dash left. Open the chest here for a big key, then dash right, and dash right again on the next screen. Line up against the left wall and dash up. Move left, around the pillar, and dash up. Dash up, take the stairs, dash right, and line up with the right side of the path here to dash up to the wall and walk through the big key door. You should always be able to miss the fire snake if you do this room the same way every time. Dash up the hallway and grab the key under the right pot. There is a heart to your left, but I usually leave it until I come back to fight the boss, just in case I need more health. Dash down along the torches to the right to line up a key dash. Stop your dash above the last torch and perform a dash turn to key dash through the door. Move up a little and dash through the blue Zizak, stopping before you hit the wall and walk through the door. Move down and dash to the left. Walk around the statue and go through the door. This room is known as the Hellway. There are a couple ways to do this room. You can either dash slightly left of the middle conveyor belt, stopping before hitting the spike, go a little right and dash up to the door, doing your best to avoid enemies on your way through. There is one pixel that works to dash straight through this room, but RNG needs to be on your side. You must be completely centered on the middle conveyor belt, and you can dash straight up. This only works if the enemies cooperate, so you will likely need to adjust to the RNG that you get. One quick thing to note here, if you did decide to get powder, you can sprinkle the powder on these anti-fairy enemies to turn them into fairies for a quick health boost. There are two ways of doing this room as well. You can either pick up the pot, throw it to the left, collecting the key and moving up between the spikes, then walking up the stairs. Alternatively, 
You can use your hammer to break the pot, hit the switch, move up slightly to be out of the way of the spikes, and dash up past the spikes to go up the stairs. In this room, pick up the lower right pot, hit the switch under the pot, and take the door to the right. Dash right through the next two rooms. Here you will want to hold right through the transition and menu to bombs. Drop one as you move right, pick up the bomb from the left side, move between the tables throwing the bomb up and dash left. Dash left back through these two rooms and go back downstairs. There are two ways of doing this room. You can either stair lag cancel to the right and walk down immediately to avoid the spikes, or you can wait until the top spike is about halfway to the right before starting your dash down the room. In the hallway, just go to the first door on your right. In this room, we can avoid the enemies completely. However, you will need to make a judgement call on which way you go. This will depend on where the red Zyzax are, and also how the Patrick Star moves. In the conveyor room, go up, right, and down the stairs. You will avoid all the enemies this way. Once down the stairs, open your menu and switch to the hammer. Kill the red Zyzak with your hammer and pick up the rock in the room. Go down. Go down to the big pot and dash right. Dash to the center of the room. You can either walk through the many locks in this room, or you can dash in between opening each lock. You will need to stop your dash before coming into contact with the locks or you will bonk. Open the chest next to the maiden for a small key, and then talk to the maiden. It is a single text box, so you can close the text with your LR buttons. Dash back down, and dash left. One quick note about this room. There is lots of health in this room, so if you need it, the right pots have hearts. If you have powder, you can powder the left pots for fairies. You don't need to pick them up first. There are bunny beams under these pots, and they will turn into fairies if you powder them. Dash left. Once we're in the room with the small key door, just dash left as you enter. If you move, you will bonk instead of key dashing. Hammer the whack-a-mole, and then open the big chest for your titan's mitts. You don't need to be in the center of the chest to open it, so open it closer to the right, as we will dash out of the room. Walk over to the middle of the conveyors, and dash up. At the top, just dash right. Walk up to the pot and collect the arrows here. We will need some later on. Go up the stairs. Walk to the right and pick up the pot to hit the switch to open the door. Walk up and pick up the pot to the left if you need more health, and then go through the door. You thought we were saving a man. Nope, it's just blind, playing dress up. One quick note about the blind fight. It is a scripted fight, meaning that if you do the same thing every time, blind will do the same thing every time. If you die during this fight, the script is messed up and you will need to react to blind's patterns. Bring blind to the center of the room. Face down, holding out your sword, and make sure it's in the middle of the part of her hair. When blind transforms, you will be able to get the first hit off this way. Swing your sword after the first hit registers, and then swing your sword again. This should complete the first phase before Blind can even get to the top of the room. The first head will start to fly around the room. It should have moved off diagonally to the right. This is important, as whichever way the head flies off Blind tells you which way Blind will move when the next head pops up. Hold out your sword to the left and dodge the fireballs and head. As he stands up, you will be able to poke the head with your sword. You will recoil a bit and you need to slash down immediately to get the next hit in. Slash down and hold B and move to the right for the third hit. As before, the second head will fly off, this time diagonally to the left. Do your best to avoid the fireballs and hold out your sword to the right for the final phase. As you recoil backwards, hold up to get to the top of the room and slash down and then slash left immediately for the final blow. This script takes some getting used to, so be sure to get some practice in on the practice hack to make sure you've got it down. Once Blind finishes exploding, grab the full heart, and as before, give Link a little mustache with the shadow of the crystal for the quick pickup. Get ready for some more button mashing to get through the text here. And don't forget to split at the sound of your victory sword swing.
That's it for this episode. In the next episode, we will rob a brewery as well as a house with curious architecture. We are also going to be chased by a frog, and we'll light a moth on fire. Before we end off, I do want to give a quick shout out to Hacksaw for helping me organize my thoughts to give shape to the series, and to Rabbit Blue Jay for creating the thumbnail for the series. Links to their channels in the description below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.